Whatever happened to these sexy guys? Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Ms. Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 90s heartthrobs. Where are they now? Letting go isn't a one-time thing. It's something that you have to do over and over again every day. That means we're looking at famous hotties from the 90s and seeing what they've been up to in their professional and personal lives in recent years. For the purposes of this list, we've left off heartthrobs that are still incredibly popular like Leonardo DiCaprio because, let's be honest, everyone knows what he's up to. All right, let's get to the list. And I love all of you. And I love all of you from the bottom of my heart. Number 10, Jason Priestley. Everyone remembers Jason Priestley as Brandon Walsh on Beverly Hills 90210, which is pretty much the quintessential 90s teen drama. I don't get it. Dating's your life, isn't it? I know it is. But out of all the cute guys at Beverly or West Beverly, I've either dated them and never want to see them again, or they're taken. All the cute guys except you. <clears throat> well, thanks for the compliment. We're happy to announce that Jason is not only doing well for himself, but that he's still incredibly hot. From 2010 to 2013, he starred in a Canadian comedy called Call Me Fitz, and later starred in the shows Raising Expectations and Private Eyes. The man in the back of your cab may have just committed a murder. Uh, I hear you, so who's coming over? Beginning in 2019, Priestley became one of many ex-Beverly Hills stars to return for BH90210 a comedy where the cast plays fictionalized versions of themselves. Well, this is weird. Oh, come on, we're all thinking it. <laughs> I like that the anniversary brought us together. I can't believe that we are all here. I wish that were true. He also married makeup artist Naomi Loud in 2005, and the couple has two children. Number 9. Mario Lopez Mario Lopez earned national attention and the hearts of young fans everywhere when he starred as A.C. Slater on Saved by the Bell. Kelly, will you go to the sweetheart dance with me? <laughs> I think it's time for a heart transplant. <laughs> She's going with me. Hey, who are you kidding, Preppy? Since that time, Lopez and his dimples have appeared in dozens of movies, TV shows, and reality programs. He's landed a recurring role on FX's Nip Tuck, starred as himself in Jane the Virgin and Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and voiced Social Smurf in The Smurfs 2. Oh yeah, I've got it all over the Smurf web. It's got 101 likes on Smurfbook. Lopez is also known for his hosting duties, having hosted Candy Crush, The X Factor, America's Best Dance Crew, and the entertainment news magazine series Extra. Well, he's the UFC's reigning heavyweight champion of the world and the number one ranked pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, and this weekend, He's getting ready to defend his title. Here to tell me what to expect, Mr. Daniel Cormier. Hey, What's up, champ? <laughs> in 2012, Lopez married Broadway actress Courtney Maza, and the couple has three children, the oldest of which was born in 2010. Number 8. Joshua Jackson Joshua Jackson was quite popular in the 90s. As Pacey Witter on Dawson's Creek, he was sarcastic and humorous. As Charlie Conway in the Mighty Ducks trilogy, he was an aspiring and talented athlete. Here she is, our coach, Coach McKay. Yeah. Come on, Coach McKay. Well, what are you waiting for? The ice to freeze? Let's play! Yeah. Go! Yeah. Yes. Jackson has since appeared in numerous independent films, including One Week, for which he won the Genie Award for Best Actor. However, Jackson has stuck primarily to television, starring in the show's Fringe and The Affair. In 2019, he appeared in three episodes of When They See Us, the Netflix drama about the infamous Central Park jogger case. Please, do those kids you're so eager to put in the jail a favor. Give them a fair fight. From now on, just fight fair. That's all we ask. Number 7. Ryder Strong Aside from having the coolest name in the universe, Ryder Strong became famous for playing Sean Hunter on Boy Meets World. Stacy, Linda, Linda, Stacy. I've never been so depressed in my whole life. No, I mean, two beautiful girls both want you, poor guy. There's gotta be a hotline you can call. <laughs> of course, with your luck, a girl would answer and she'd want you. After the show concluded in 2000, Strong went to college and proved his wicked intelligence, graduating magna cum laude from Columbia and earning his master's at Bennington College. High school is over. And just when I'm finally free, I find myself sneaking back into this place and sitting in the hall, thinking about my friends and all the time we spent here. 
In this time, he continued to appear in bit roles in movies and TV shows, but finally broke back into the mainstream with Girl Meets World, where he reprised his role as Sean Hunter and directed 18 episodes. Gee, Cor, I thought you'd be more excited to see me. <gasps> Yay! He also landed a recurring role on Disney XD's Star vs. the Forces of Evil, where he voiced Tom Lucitor. I have something I need to confess. I used Mr. Candle to try to get back together with you. And it took me destroying Marco 58 games to zero to realize I was wrong. Number six, Ryan Philippi. Why can't we be together? Do you really want to know why? Yes, I want to know why. It's because I don't trust myself with you. Ryan Philippi just managed to squeak by and earn his credentials as a 90s heartthrob thanks to a string of late 90s movies, including Cruel Intentions and I Know What You Did Last Summer. He also earned fame and notoriety by marrying Reese Witherspoon, and the couple had two children together. Unfortunately, they officially divorced in 2008. I think I think more of the problem was age, you know, when we got together so young. Um, I think it can create issues uh, to people in, in this industry because there's so much noise that goes along with it. Since then, Philippi has scored a few notable roles on television. He appeared in 10 episodes of Damages in 2012 and landed a main role on ABC's Secrets and Lies. He also produced and starred in the USA Network drama Shooter, which ended its run after three seasons in 2018. Number 5. Christian Slater Christian Slater rose to prominence in the late 80s before breaking into the mainstream with big-budget movies like Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and Interview with the Vampire. You, uh, you said you found nothing? Peasant rumors. Superstitions about garlic, crosses, the old stake in the heart. But one of our kind, not a whisper. Despite appearing in numerous movies, TV shows, and Broadway plays throughout the 2000s and 2010s, he's never quite regained the fame and critical attention he enjoyed in the late 80s and early 90s. Fortunately, that changed with Mr. Robot, the USA Network drama that Slater helped produce. Lose Darlene's number, it's a rule for a reason. Don't worry, I'm not gonna use it. She's right about one thing. You're the one they want to talk to. We can't afford any distractions. His role as the eponymous Mr. Robot has earned him a Critics' Choice Television Award, a Golden Globe, and a Satellite Award for Best Supporting Actor. Yep, he's back. As it's gone along, my level of awareness has risen as far as technology goes, and um, it's very uh, smart to change your pass passwords as often as possible. My new one is Golden Globe. That's a new password. Number four, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. You have a great time. And don't forget to write. Call when you get there. Call before you get there. <laughs> or I could open the emergency door and just yell out the plane. <laughs> we know what you're thinking. Did JTT drop off the face of the earth? Because it certainly seems like he did. Thomas was a mega star throughout the 90s thanks to his roles in The Lion King and Home Improvement. I don't know what to say. Tell me I'm pretty. Are you mom or Beth? <laughs> However, he left the show in 1998 to focus on his schooling, which certainly worked out well. He graduated with honors from Chaminade College Preparatory School in 2000 and the Columbia University School of General Studies in 2010. Oh, man. I'm such a dork. More recently, Thomas appeared in episodes of Last Man Standing, effectively reuniting with his Home Improvement co-star Tim Allen. I'm Mike Baxter. Hey. Man, you look familiar. <laughs> well, you know, I used to work with Kristen. Hmm. That's not it. <laughs> Aside from that, he's been living a quiet life away from the spotlight, and we certainly respect that. It's just hard being the oldest kid when the youngest is dad's favorite, and the middle child is, you know, the breakout star everybody swoons over. Well, <laughs> you know, a lot of times that middle child ends up being the funny one because he wants the attention. Number three, Mark Paul Gossler. Mark Paul Gossler earned national attention as a teenager when he starred as Zach Morris in Saved by the Bell and its spinoffs. Hey, come on, Zach, let's go work on the song. You know, Screech, no one wants to be remembered as the school's biggest goof-off. What I need to do is figure out a way to clear my name. The only way you can clear your name is to change it. <laughs> Beginning in 2001, when Gosler was 27, he began starring in NYPD Blue, in a role he would inhabit for 87 episodes between 2001 and 2005. We're gonna run a lineup then, Terrence. 
Once you get picked out of that, it's over with. No deals, nothing falling through the cracks. Straight time, lots of it. Since then, he's scored numerous roles in various television shows, including Franklin and Bash and Pitch. In 2019, he landed main roles in the ABC sitcom Mixed-ish, a spin-off of Blackish, and Fox's The Passage, where he played federal agent Brad Wolgast. Hi, I'm Pete Erickson. This is my daughter, Stella. We're brand new to this school, and uh, I'm such an idiot. I forgot everything. I forgot about the field trip, her, her T-shirt, her lunch. I'm just trying to get used to this whole single dad thing. He's also married with four children and enjoys race car driving, dirt biking, cycling, and piloting aircraft. In short, he's not without things to do. Number 2. James Vanderbeek If everyone loved Joshua Jackson in Dawson's Creek, then everyone positively swooned over Dawson himself. Things are never going to be the same between us, are they? No. Vanderbeek appeared in all 128 episodes of the series, and despite all this work, his legacy amounts to an ever popular meme. Dawson! Joey, go! I'm telling you, before I take it all back, all right? Just go. <laughs> go! Following Dawson's Creek, Vanderbeek sort of disappeared before emerging as a wacky, fictionalized version of himself on Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23. Following this, he landed main roles on various TV shows like Pose, Vampirina, and Carter's Get Rich. And he also created the Viceland comedy What Would Diplo Do?, a series about a stupid but kind-hearted DJ. Yo, where's the coffee at? Oh, shit. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Freddie Prinze Jr. And now for the biggest heartthrob of the 90s, Freddie Prinze Jr. Well, I'll be damned. Hi. Like Ryan Phillippe, Freddie Prinze just barely squeaked into our little 90s hearts thanks to various popular movies, including I Know What You Did Last Summer and She's All That. You're not just trying to get my vote for Prom King, are you? Freddie's had a quiet 2010s, with his most substantial role being that of Kanan Jarrus in Star Wars Rebels. You don't always have to see something to know where it is. He's also done some voice work in the video game industry, appearing in both Mass Effect 3 and Dragon Age Inquisition. So, you're with the Inquisition, huh? Glad you could make it. Come on, have a seat. Drinks are coming. Aside from that, he's simply living a quiet life with his wife Sarah Michelle Gellar and their two children. Sounds pretty cozy. I'm trying to remember who my 90s heartthrobs were. Like, Ryan Reynolds? The Backstreet Boys? Chandler? Also, can we talk about how Dawson's super Neville Longbottomed? Wow. Anyway, be sure to tell us what posters you had in your locker in the 90s in the comments, or come talk to me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton. And please be sure to like and subscribe and watch this other video.